So in the Army Digital Transformation Strategy, we, we identified three main objectives. Uh, we had uh, 13 lines of effort below that. Um, and then today we have over 25 projects and initiatives that we're working on this year in 2022. So as you can see, they're all well nested. Um, and, and the reason why we did that was we wanted to make sure that, you know, um, one, we wanted to make sure that projects that are being worked across the Army now come under a common governance and oversight, you know, that I can manage so we can see it, we can help them, and, and we can help bring that enterprise lens to it. Um, but then it was also important that, you know, we picked, we selectively pick projects uh, that were truly important to us, you know, over the next two or two or three years. So um, in terms of the, 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 the objectives themselves, the first objective is all around, you know, being able to um, uh, support current army readiness and future modernization. And, and, so, um, and so we have a number of efforts and initiatives uh, under that, uh, primarily led, led by our cloud efforts, but it's also our data transformation efforts. It's the efforts that we're working on zero trust from a cybersecurity perspective. And then the, um, uh, it's also the modernization of some of our enduring systems, uh, leveraging DevSecOps and agile development. And then finally, you know, modern, uh, the uh, unifying and modernization of our uh, warfighting network. So, so those are some of the big pieces under that first objective. The second priority, the second big objective is how we can do that from a reform mindset. And like you said, as big as the army is and as big as our budget is, which is about $16 billion a year, uh, it's really important that we continue to do this in a smart way. Um, and the only way we can do that is to make sure that we, um, you know, uh, we see good value for every taxpayer dollar, you know, that we spend. And so getting a handle on uh, our portfolio, um, you know, getting, you know, looking at our portfolio management processes, looking at where we need to divest and sunset some of the legacy systems, which ones we modernize and move to the cloud. And, and being able to do that essentially in a budget neutral environment is, is going to be absolutely critical. And then along with that, we also acknowledge that we have to reform many of the institutional processes that the Army has in order for us to be you know, much more agile and, and, and take on that digital mindset. Because you know, if it takes us two years to write a requirements document, and then it takes us another two years to, you know, to go on contract, and then it takes another five years to build the, you know, the technology, you can imagine, you know, how slow that's going to be, you know, to keep up with the changing pace of technology. So, so it's really important that, you know, we go after these institution processes and policies to make sure that they align with digital principles. And so that's part of our efforts under the reform effort. And then finally, the third piece is all about our people. And we acknowledge that, you know, from a digital transformation perspective, at the end of the day, you know, I as a CIO can lay the vision, but that execution has to be done by every digitally digital native worker across the army. And, and when we have to empower them, we got to make sure that they have the skills and, and the ability to be able to go innovate at scale. And, and so we have um, an effort to make sure that we are looking at how we are recruiting the, the best talent, how we're making sure we can retain them and then giving them the right developmental opportunities so they can um, become the, you know, the, the digital natives um, of the army in future.